I don't know if you heard Congresswoman Kamek, but she said majority down to two. I mean, this is a situation for Republicans. And she said the vote was not political, but it's hard not to have the politics right staring you in the face. Well, this is one of those things you got to do what's right. But you know what? Mm -hmm. If this is the standard, how come they're not uh, having this vote on Adam Schiff or Eric Swalwell? So why are people on the Intel committee? I don't know. Hey guys, Max here. And in case you missed it, New York Republican and alleged con man George Santos was kicked out of Congress last week. Hooray! And while Democrats and Republicans work together to kick Santos out, that means that the Republicans' new majority is a slim two. And that razor thin majority has Republicans pretty nervous because this year's special elections really haven't gone their way. Democrats have been dominating Republicans in special elections all across the country for seats ranging from the city council to Congress. American voters clearly aren't buying what the Republicans are selling. But now right-wing pundits, including former Congressman Jason Chaffetz, have an even better idea for protecting Republicans' majority. For every Republican that gets kicked out of the House for corruption, they're just gonna kick a Democrat out too, even if none of those Democrats have actually done anything wrong. Well, the Ethics Committee is very balanced. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's an equal number on, on both sides. And, and I think the Democrats are very inconsistent here because if you're going to take this position on Santos, where is your position on Menendez? Because he, he is equally, I mean, he has damning evidence against him. He has evidence out the Yahoo and he also has a very scathing ethics report. Look. And yet nobody had a problem with that. So Couple things here. First off, the House hasn't voted to expel New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez because Menendez isn't a member of the House. He's a senator. That's why we call him Senator Menendez and exactly why Jason Chaffetz took a whole lot of care not to say that. And more to the point, I don't know where Chaffetz gets the idea that Democrats were silent about Menendez's pretty blatant corruption. Oh wait. Yeah, I do. He's literally making it up as he goes along. Back in reality, Democrats actually called on Menendez to resign so quickly that the New York Times called it a stampede. That included Menendez's New Jersey colleague, Cory Booker, who straight up called out Menendez's, quote, shocking allegations of corruption. Within just two days, 31 Senate Democrats were on the record calling for Menendez to resign, and dozens of House Democrats joined them, including New Jerseyans Bill Pascrell, Frank Pallone Jr., Josh Gottheim, Andy Kim, and Mikey Sherrill. In short, Josh Chaffetz doesn't know what he's talking about. But whenever a snake oil salesman like George Santos finds himself in trouble, he can always count on the ready support of other grifters. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there are quite a few grifters in the Republican Party these days, and none are quite as hungry for a camera as Vivek Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy recently saw his polling crash back to earth after the first presidential debate. Now he's trying to get a new attention-getting role as the diehard George Santos defender. This George Santos guy has some serious problems and I'd live a good life if I never met the guy. Probably most of us would. But I think it's wrong that he was expelled without putting it to the voters or without running it through the court process. The judicial system determines the guilt. The guy's been indicted. Let that play itself out. Anybody since the Civil War who has been expelled, it's only been two people, both of them were convicted in a court of law before their fellow congressmen got them out. As ugly as politicians are, and I think many of their behaviors are god-awful ugly, some of them downright criminal, We have a system for dealing with who serves in Congress. Now I'll say this again, because given his history with dumb statements, there's an even up chance Ramaswamy really doesn't know this. But a vote to expel a member of Congress isn't a legal trial. You don't have to prove to a jury that Santos committed fraud. Much like kicking out a speaker, an expulsion vote is really a vote of confidence in a lawmaker, a vote Santos clearly lost. But Ramaswamy wasn't done. Because by God, there's a camera pointed at his face and he's gonna keep saying mostly wrong stuff until the battery runs out. It's this thing we call elections in our country. We have them every two years for Congress. There's another one next year, just like there was one last year. So if it has to be outside of that normal democratic process, it better darn well be a court of law that's found somebody guilty. Now that this guy has been expelled and he does seem like a pathological liar and everything else if if what's printed in the press is to be believed, That being said, this sets a terrible precedent. Now that they can use this for George Santos, they can use this for anybody. Yeah, guys, we have this thing called elections, which George Santos can still run in if he wants. I mean, seriously, if Santos felt like it, he could re-announce his campaign today. And people like Vivek Ramaswamy could donate to that campaign. Just 
make sure it's actually Ramaswamy doing the donating. I hear George Santos has a little bit of a problem with identity theft, but Ramaswamy is absolutely right about exactly one thing. If what happened to George Santos becomes a precedent, that's going to be real bad for Republicans. And you're not going to believe this, but one Republican has been busy spilling the tea on all of the insider corruption within the GOP. None other than former Congressman George Santos. Um, thank you for the love. Thank you for the kindness. You know, Botox keeps you young. Fillers keeps you plump. <laughs> Ooh, sorry guys. That was a personal video. Anyway, Santos took to Twitter over the weekend to drag not one, but four Republicans by name for what he alleges are crimes ranging from insider trading to funneling campaign money to consulting firms politicians own. In one post, Santos claimed he'd be filing an ethics complaint against Mike Lawler for essentially paying himself for campaign services. Santos asks, quote, isn't Mr. Lawler engaging in money laundering? Well, George Santos would definitely know money laundering when he sees it. In another post, Santos accuses Congressman Nick LaLota of grifting the public by allegedly no-showing for his taxpayer-funded job. Santos also accused Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis of insider trading and financial fraud, implying that she made hugely profitable trades based on information she learned in Congress. The accusations are huge, but are they true? George Santos may be out of Congress, but there's no way he's going away. And with a booming Twitter following, he may end up being more of a headache for Republicans in retirement than he was as a member of Congress. Until he goes to prison, anyway. And you can have a bit of George Santos fun yourself. Apparently, the former congressman is now making cameo videos for just $200 each, in case anyone wants to make me the happiest boy in the world. <laughs> and if you thought that was wild, check out this story. The division of the United States has all yes, come from Obama. In what way? because he's black. And as always, leave a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.